question from uh, one of you, why do I experience abdominal pain? That's, that's a tough one to answer uh, because there's a long list of causes for uh, abdominal pain in people with Crohn's and, and colitis. And uh, unfortunately, as some of you may know well, it's sometimes impossible to figure out what is causing uh, pain in an individual. But I put together a little list here of things to consider. Uh, sometimes pain is directly related to IBD. It could be because the bowel is actively inflamed. That's a painful process. It could be related to uh, uh, some of the complications and scar tissue that can form leading to narrowings or strictures that can lead to blockages in the bowel. That can be a cause of pain. As food tries to get through, a lot of spasm above that narrowing, trying to squeeze and for people with Crohn's disease, probably more Crohn's disease clients, but can develop adhesions where the bowel is stuck to other parts of the bowel or up against the lining of the belly. And that uh, stickiness can uh, cause a lot of tugging and pulling and pain as well. And of course, if you've got Crohn's disease and you suddenly develop pain, we worry about other things, including infections mm -hmm. like abscesses. But then yeah, those are things related directly to IBD, but then there's a whole list of other things that can cause pain independent of IBD, and that list could probably go on for pages and pages, but you know, having IBD, for example, does not prevent you from having irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, different disorder, but they overlap quite a bit. Plain old constipation, acid reflux, kidney stones and gallstones, and people with Crohn's disease are actually more at risk of kidney stones and gallstones in the general population. Other things like pancreatitis can happen, so you have to kind of keep a very broad, uh, uh, a very open mind when you have pain, thinking about things not necessarily directly related to IBD. And as I said, it's often hard to prove the source. And there are people, unfortunately, who just need to manage the pain and, and stop hunting. So what is out there for pain? So again, this is one of your questions, what treatment options exist uh, for people with IBD to manage, uh, manage pain? Um, so I, again, some thoughts here, uh, I think, I, Number one list, I would maybe even before this is to say is, is to actually treat your IBD. If the IBD is the cause of the pain, maybe we need to change your treatment to get it under better control. But in general, if, uh, for unexplained and chronic pain, I think your primary care provider becomes part of the circle of care here, and they should really be uh, be engaged with this. We do try to avoid uh, using narcotics. It's just a challenging situation to treat stomach pain with narcotics. Often the requirement for doses uh, creeps up and it's unfortunately we see a lot of people very with very good intentions become fairly dependent on narcotics and it's a real problem. Uh, we try to avoid what we call NSAIDs, that would be things like Motrin, Advil, and Naproxen, as well as aspirin, because there are some data to suggest that those medications can actually make Crohn's and colitis a bit worse. So we try to avoid them if possible, but acetaminophen, or plain Tylenol is fine if it's helpful. I mentioned the anti-spasm medications on the slide before. If you like natural therapies, peppermint, peppermint oil. Uh, there are a number of over-the-counter products that contain the uh, peppermint oil in capsules, and that it has some good uh, scientific evidence behind it saying it can help relieve spasm and hence pain. Modifying the diet, uh, you know, if you've got uh, areas of narrowing and experiencing pain, maybe the, it's because food's having trouble getting through. As many of you will know, we talk about low residue diets. We're trying to avoid big particles that don't get digested. That'd be things like nuts, peels, and seeds. Uh, and so that low residue diet may make it easier for food to pass and hence less painful. And we also talk often about what's called a low FODMAP diet. Uh, this is trying to avoid foods that, that create a lot of gas as they get digested because it's that gas production, which is often a cause of, of pain. So those are some dietary strategies to consider. Important to manage mental health. I mentioned the relationship between uh, mental health and gut symptoms and pain can be part of that. So if, if people are struggling with uh, anxiety and depression, often the best way to manage stomach pain is actually to manage the anxiety and depression better. And so we have to be very aware of that. Physical exercise can be very good for mental health and for chronic symptoms. And think outside the box. I, I think uh, I'm very open mind to all these other approaches, which can include things like acupuncture, massage therapy, physiotherapy, pelvic physiotherapy, all of which can be helpful to individual patients. And of course, I put cannabis here because in Canada we have to really have that list. I think we need a lot of really some more evidence on this, uh, but I, 
just anecdotally, uh, obviously, a lot of people are looking to uh, cannabis derivatives for managing pain and other symptoms. And, and uh, anecdotally, it seems to be beneficial for some people. And I hope we'll have better studies to better understand uh, some of the, the long-term safety and effects of that therapy. But I, I think it is an option, certainly, in Canada.